I'm Joe Krolak, uh, and the principal hydraulic engineer. It is a pleasure. I wanted to give you a brief briefing on topical topics. So just bear with me, kind of give you a high level view of what's going on with Federal Highway. Um, first, who are we? You know, that picture of Stan and his colleagues in 1963, there were lots of <laughs> hydraulic engineers at the Bureau of Public Road. At this point, there's only 20 of us in the entire uh, agency. So essentially, 20 folks, this was a picture of the most recent, it was taken yesterday. So these are my colleagues, and that's who we are. And where we came from, this is another interesting picture. This is before Stan joined us at Federal Highway, but this is from the 1957 hydraulic engineering meeting. So uh, it's gone from folks in very fine looking suits to a more diverse and more eclectically dressed group we have here today. Now, those 20 people we have, essentially, where are we? Well, we're pretty much all over the country, and we have folks who work in what we call our federal lands divisions that are in Vancouver, Washington, Sterling, Virginia, and uh, Lakewood, Colorado. And our federal lands folks are essentially our colleagues who are performing the same duties as many of the state DOT hydraulics folks. So they're working with federal lands, whether it's Forest Service, uh, Park Service, working with our tribal governments on transportation projects. And they bring insights and uh, ideas and experiences from the actual field. Other important folks are in our resource centers. And our resource center folks, they actually used to be at facilities, but now we're starting to get folks who are uh, in what we call virtual environments. They're able to work at home and still provide outreach and deployment and implementation of um, assistance to all of our colleagues. And when I came into Federal Highway in 2000, I was in a resource center in Baltimore, and it was the best job I ever had because my job was to help people. Now I'm in DC, and you know what that means. So things have changed, but our resource center folks, and um, we have five folks and a technical service team managed there. Next is our colleague, Cornell Carini, who works at the Turner Fairbanks Highway Research Center. Now there's only one person, only one Cornell, but in a way, Cornell does the, the none of work of five, ten different people. He's one of the most effective researchers I've ever had the pleasure to work with. And so a lot of things, if I have a crazy, stupid idea, I give it to Cornell and all of a sudden I look smart because he makes it into a good, actionable research activity. Finally, we have the headquarters folks, myself, my colleague Brian Buclair, and our brand new senior scour engineer, Paul Sharp, who's here this week. Paul, as you may or may not know, is essentially filling the shoes of our brother Dave, Dave Henderson, who has finally, we hope, retired to enjoy his life in wearing kilts every day. So who we work with is everyone. We work with all the DOTs, we work with municipalities, we work with TRB, we work with AASHTO, we work with consultants, we work with academia, we work with the public. So our team has a very broad focus, and that's a lot for 20 people. What kind of work do we do? One thing I like about hydraulics is that we are engaged in any part of program and project delivery. So I can tease my structural con, you know, colleagues and say, well, you might be quibble about what type of concrete you might use or what kind of steel you're going to use. I work from things, and we work with things, from planning to climate and extreme events to right away, environment, design, construction, operations and management, emergency relief, and other variety of different aspects. So one nice thing about working with the Federal Highway National Hydraulics team is we have an entire breadth of different areas and activities that we seek to work with. Where we work and why we work? Well, this is a kind of redemption. It's showing 
every bridge over water from about 1900 to currently 2016. And there are of approximately 615,000 bridges in this country, about just over 80% are over water. So with that kind of statistics, I think we have long-term employment activities at Federal Highway as well, because not only are we working with bridges, we're working with any other aspect of the transportation system. So how do we determine that? How do we group that? Well, if you haven't seen it, we call this grouping of activities our functional areas. So we work with hydrology. We work with pavements and pavement drainage, culverts, bridges, scour, and coastal. And I'm just going to give you essentially a quick overview of what we're kind of doing in some of these things within the time I have remaining. Now, we also have route reach, and you probably have heard of our hydraulic engineering circulars and our hydraulic design series, and pretty much each of the functional areas have some component of technical guidance that we provide and make available for our partners in the transportation field to essentially help them with different technical issues. Now, let's talk about each of those kind of focus areas of some of the things that are really happening interestingly in each of these uh, functional areas. In hydrology, the focus areas are, again, hydrology remains that, but we remain invested in our floodplain program. Last year, August 17, 2017, President Trump put in an executive order which revoked the federal, the executive order 13690 FFRMS. I went home to my wife and I said, that's five years of my life that just got signed away by the president. But then I smiled and said, let's get a drink because that's five years of my life I just got back. So basically, FFRMS is no longer going to be a requirement in floodplains. And so we're back to where we were in floodplain policy that we're going to be following the current regulations, which actually Stan Davis also helped with, the 23 CFR 650 subpart A. So a lot of things happening on floodplains, but essentially that's a focus and we're trying to get reestablished what is the direction of the current administration in terms of their floodplain policy. The other portion that we're engaged in is under MAP 21, which was mentioned earlier, and under the FAST Act, Congress specifically gave Federal Highway the authority to consider extreme events for both projects, whether it's new projects, rehabilitation, or whatever, but essentially allowed us to consider extreme events as part of our mandate. Additionally, the law required us to consider extreme events in our research activities. So Federal Highway continues to basically look at extreme events and how items such as rainfall, stream flow, sea level rise, and other aspects of extreme events may affect our current and future transportation system. Now, don't be shocked. Federal Highway, in the first standard that they put out for the interstate, interstate in August 10, 1956, said that for all future, all interstates that were going to be built, they had to look at the future. They had to consider changing events that may occur. And that was part of the design standards that were in effect back over 60 years ago, nearly 70, I guess. So that's part of hydrology. And we're going to hear different aspects of that and hear from other folks who are also engaged in these kind of efforts in hydrology, floodplain, and extreme events. Another focus area, although pavements and drainage is quite significant, we're going to hear about hydroplaning. Um, we're, we're going to, we've been studying hydroplaning, working with NCHRP uh, projects. We're conducting our own hydroplaning research using the talents of the Yargon National Laboratory to help us to better assess what is going to be the interaction between different rainfall events, water film thickness, different interstate and, uh, roadway and lane configurations. 
So that's an ongoing project that we're doing in conjunction with the NCHRP projects. You're going to hear about work this week that was conducted by University of Texas for Texas DOT on inlets. Some pretty interesting stuff and actually quite daunting from my perspective. So we're going to, I encourage you when you have a chance to find out more about that. But we're going to turn around and support any efforts that we have to to make sure that we have the safest and most under reliable drainage systems that we can have. What that means we have to update our documents or provide technical briefs, we're going to do so. Our focus areas in culverts, the first one, the big one, is aquatic organism passage, fish passage. Again, there are going to be some interesting presentations that I encourage you to see. We're looking at ways that we can start to work with the, the uh, biologists, the environmental scientists, the planners, and others that we can hopefully, no pun intended, bridge the gap so that we can bring engineering practice and AOP practice to an area that we can basically both move forward to good, sustainable projects, as well as an Ohio DOT is actually a leader in this, asset management, in particular of culverts. For bridges, this is one of our major initiatives. We call it change. And essentially, it's to provide the state DOTs with the tools to basically look at two-dimensional modeling and how we can improve and raise the state of practice so that we can have better outcomes that affect those entire project delivery areas, whether it's environmental, whether it's emergency relief. Scott Hogan's leading it for us. He's just done, he's doing an excellent job. And in fact, we were asked to become, for the next EDC-5, basically change 2.0. So we're going to continue to do this kind of outreach and provide the services to our partners, hopefully expanding it to not only to the states, but also to other uh, transportation uh, groups. And we want to essentially incorporate some of the advances that we're seeing uh, conducted by our laboratory and by our colleagues and by you all into some of these efforts. <sighs> scour. Now, basically scour is probably one of our biggest aspects of our program. And what are the focus areas? Everything. Now, what I've done is I've challenged our team and I challenge you that let's look at Scour as a next generation. You know, back in the day when we picked the 100 and 500 year flow as the, uh, the events that we were looking towards designing and checking Scour for, essentially, I like to say that was almost a fifth order surrogate. There's a lot of uncertainty and saying for any given site that the 100 and 500 year events are going to give you equally balanced assessments of what the scour potential would be is misleading. Well, we can go to 1D models and we can come back and have a better understanding of scalar velocities, scalar depths, and essentially apply that with better estimates of what we might do to predict a scour. But again, as Scott says, that's like driving your 1960 pickup. 1D models have been around that long. Change gives us the ability to start considering vector velocities and more precise depths at those elements. So that's a better surrogate for coming up with what are predicted scour values. But really, scour is not necessarily velocity. It's not necessarily um, depth. It's essentially energy, momentum, and the forces that are being exerted by the hydrodynamics onto that erosive bed or onto those surfaces. And that's where we're going, and that's where we want to basically start to focus our efforts. And you may see tomorrow, if you go on the field trip, some of our efforts in that area. The other thing is, for a long time, scourge, we talk about multidisciplinary ideas. Stan was a proponent of it. We should say that hydraulics, which is the water component, soil, which is the geotechnical 
considerations should be balanced. But over the years, we've tilted that balance to more of a hydraulic area. I will say, using D50 as a surrogate for soil properties is not an appropriate approach for a national program. So we want to essentially reestablish the next generation to essentially say, we're going to have things that we can do as hydraulic engineers, but we want to get our geotechnical involved, uh, engineers involved as well and geologists so that we can look at the soil properties and come up with a better relationship between the loads and the resistance of scour. The final aspect of what we're doing is coastal. Right now, we again are focusing on extreme events. We look to draw upon the efforts of the NCHRP projects as well as our efforts from the Corps of Engineers and from NOAA and other federal science agencies to help us inform what will be the next steps we want to take and incorporate them into our HEC 25 uh, documents. So we're currently underway to update the documents to a third edition. The other thing that we're adding, though, is recognizing that gray infrastructure is not the only way we should be looking at our coastal environment. We are conducting right now a green infrastructure project, looking at pilot projects and other activities around the country, and we in intend to include the outcomes and insights from that study into our HEC 25. We also want to continue to make sure that our understanding of wave forces basically reflects what is going to be the effects that we might establish at certain types of structures in our transportation community. Updating is necessary. And because of the pool fund study that's currently underway in tsunamis, we want to essentially be able to make bridge the gap and provide those areas in the coast that may be susceptible to tsunamis some type of information that they can use to basically better inform and to supplement the work that would be placed into AASHTO. So that's a lot of things. And remember, there's only 20 of us. So if you look at that first picture and you saw a lot of dark brown hair and you're seeing a lot of gray here now, that's probably why. So in conclusion, Federal Highway welcomes you to the conference. We are looking forward to your insights. We look forward to where you're saying, hey, we don't always agree with Federal Highway or Federal Highway's an error because we're going to learn as much as you will. And we're looking forward to that kind of dialogue, coordination, and consensus. So with those words, I want to thank you very much and turn it back over to Cynthia.